and today we're going to be looking some more detail at concentrations and strength of acids. Now, there's a difference between concentration and strength and it is actually worth looking up if you don't know this already. So if you're doing GCSE or that level of chemistry then you'll need to know the difference between concentration and strength of an acid. Concentration is how much acid there is Dissolved in comparison dissolved to water. So yes, so basically the concentration of the acid is how much of the acid that we solid that we have dissolved in water. Now we're using an acid solid that you can easily get hold of today. Okay, would you like to show us the box? Okay, so this is the box. Now you can get hold of this very easily from shops that do baking. We got hold of ours from a chemist. This is what this is what your citric acid looks like when you have actually got it out. But you'll have a bit more of it. Well, this is actually only about 10 grams of the stuff. So what we're going to show you is how to make a solution of what is about one molar of this. That's when you dissolve one mole of your solid into one litre of water. So that's one more solution. And then we're going to dilute it down into three different dilutions. And we're going to have a look at what diluting it down does to the pH. Okay. Now citric acid is a very, very weak acid. And it's, it's a weak acid because of what? Do you remember? Weak acids, when they separate into H plus and H minus when they're dissolved in water, they don't separate properly. Okay, right, so when we, you mean when they separate out into their positive ions, which are H+, yes. and the rest of the molecule is a H minus. minus. No, it's not H no. minus. You don't get H minus signs. It's the rest of it with a minus sign. Okay, oh. so we're looking at an acid which you looked up the molecular um, formula for it uh, earlier, and you helpfully wrote it down. So for those of you who are interested, it will be in the worksheet that's attached, and... It, I will read it out slowly now so you can make a note if you want to. It's C6H8O7. So what happens is when it dissociates in the water into positive ions and negative ions, you get H plus is your positive ion, and your negative ion is C6H7O7, negative. And it's negative because when you add the H plus and the negative ion together, you get neutral, okay? And what's happened is the molecule is neutral normally, it has no charge. There's a joke in that somewhere. So it has no charge, and when we split it in the water, we get H plus and the rest of it minus, and the water is doing the same, and it's a reversible reaction. Now in water, you've got, OH, you've got as many OH minus molecules as you have H plus molecules, and water always comes out neutral because OH minus molecules are alkali. When yes. you've got equal alkali, equal acid, you've got a neutral solution, and that was the basis of the titration that we did last lesson. Okay, so last lesson was titration. Do have a look at that one if you haven't already. Now, if you haven't made yourself some red cabbage indicator yet, you need to look at lesson one and get lesson one at the beginning of lesson one sorted out and get yourself some red cabbage indicator because you're going to need that for this lesson. And now we're going to weigh out everything. Now, we have got a calculations video where we have shown you how we calculated how much we're weighing out. And what we're going to do is we're going to try and get as close as possible to 9.6 grams in a little pudding pot. Because that's what we've worked out in the calculation. And you need something to transfer it over. That, that could work, um, but an ordinary teaspoon is just fine. So you're going to transfer over about 9.6 grams into there. So we put the pudding pot on the scales and press the zero button. I'll just let you know that that's about 10 grams that I weighed out, so it should be almost the whole lot. And we're going to dissolve that into 50 millilitres of water, which we worked out that that would make a one mole solution. Obviously we're using the same glassware as we normally do, which is pudding pots. empty jam jars and pudding pots. We also obviously have a weighing scales, which we're going to use to get the accurate as possible 
to one gram. That one milliliter of water weighs one gram and so we can do a direct conversion between the two. And there you go, leave it like that, there you go. So it's very difficult to get that to 9.6, there's absolutely no way. So it's not going to be exactly a one molar solution but it's going to be thereabouts. If you, if you were doing this in your science lab at school, you would have scales that would measure down 2.1 of a gram at the very most, so you could get a lot more accurate in a science lab at school than we can here in the kitchen. Of course, we're restricted to doing it here in the kitchen. Now, we have got some other containers that you might not have at home, but you could possibly get them online. This is a plastic a measuring cylinder which measures up to 100 millilitres and it measures down to about 5 millilitres very accurately and this is um, a 250 millilitre beaker. This is not the sort of glassware that you would use in the lab because the glassware that you'd use in the lab for a beaker it would always be Pyrex so that you can heat it over the Bunsen burner. You can't heat that. You can't heat that over the Bunsen burner. Interestingly enough though you might be able to heat some of your other glassware in the kitchen. Now, we're going to put the jam jar on and zero that. And zero that. And you're now going to measure us 50 millilitres of, of water into the jam jar because that's what we use. So that should show, show 50 grams, right? So that should show 50 grams when that's got 50 millilitres in. Don't forget that you can use the pipettes if you go over to take a little, the little bit of extra out. Okay, so we've got as near as we can get it to perfect, 50 grams in there now. So what do you think we're going to do next? We're going to put that in. That's right, so that's all we do basically. Now, if you are going to pour that in, you can use a plastic funnel or you can use a piece of paper, a piece of paper which is probably better. Or you can use this piece of clear plastic which I prepared earlier. Here's one. Like maybe yeah, prepared that's earlier. just so that you can aim close. So it does help if you've got a partner to and hold your funnel for you. Yeah, yeah. Should be Le leaving the bits in there because we did go a little slightly bit over, over, yeah. So now we don't need it on the weighing scales anymore because unlike when we did the titration we were having to measure it the whole time. We don't need to measure it the whole time because that's so not we what we're measuring. It. So now we use our stirring stick. Do you remember what we use for stirring sticks? Chopsticks. We're using a chopstick, but you can use anything stick-like basically, preferably not your pets because the pets take some of your solution. Could you use a pipette? The bulb of a pipette though. Not really, no. Right. So once you think you've got it fully dissolved and you can't see any more solidy bits at the bottom, then you can have a look and check whether it actually has or not. Why I don't it up see to any. light? I'm clearing over the top of your glasses. Bit. No, I can't see any solidy bits either, but you can see that it's gone quite cloudy and it hasn't really gone to the same extent that we were getting before. So I just put my white sheet of paper underneath it because remember, if we're testing for pH values, then we really need to be looking at it over, over a white sheet of paper. So now we can see that it's a bit cloudy. Okay, so and the thing that we need to measure now is we're going to measure out, we're going to make two more different concentrations of this solution. So we know that this is a weak acid, it doesn't dissociate in the water very much. And we're going to make two different concentrations of that weak acid to see if we can see any differences in the pH dependent on concentration. So we know that we get a change in pH on strength. But do we get a change in pH if we dilute it down? And this is the question we're going to ask yes. ourselves. Do we? Do we? Yes. Do we? So what we're going to do is we're going to take 25 millilitres out of that jar, which is half of it, because it's fine, we're just testing it for pH, so we don't need very much in there anyway. Um, so you might want to use your pipettes to sort that out. And we're going to add in another 25 millilitres of water, taking it down to half the concentration that it currently is at. So if we've got a, a ooh, perfect. If we've got a one molar concentration in there, and we make it to half the concentration in here, what, uh, what molarity have we got now? 50%. No, we haven't. If we've got a one molar concentration yeah. in that first jar, and we put half of it into here and dilute it to half... Then we're going to have half a molar. We're going to have half a molar. Okay, good. So, we're going to um, cheat slightly. We're actually going to use the measuring cylinder for this. So, 
if you have got access to a measuring cylinder, then you can do this too. If you haven't, then yeah, then use your weighing scales or use a measuring jug and try and get it as close as you can. So I'm going to take it up to, there we go, I'm going to take it up to 20 millilitres for you and you're going to come down like this so you can see there, the bottom. Um, so you're going to crouch down so your eye level is down there and you are going to pipette in the additional five mils. And I'm going to adjust the camera angle so that you can be seen whilst you do it. So wait a moment, wait a moment. You're going to get your eyes down. Okay. So, so what pet in the extra five mils? How am I? It doesn't. Okay, so. Oh, 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 you want me? Okay, got it. So you go like this. Yeah. And then lift it over like that. So okay. you're crouched down so your eyes are at that level, okay? Yeah. I'm going to make sure that you're in the view. Okay, so we're going to pipette in the last five mils into the measuring cylinder. So looking from the side there with your eye at the level of the meniscus, you get a much better view of where the meniscus is and you can actually tell more accurately when you're at that 25 mil mark. Right, now you've measured that out accurately, which I'm very impressed by, do you want to pour that into a solution there? So stirring that in with a different chopstick because we can't use the same chopstick for both solutions because that one has been used for a different strength solution. So if you do, in the lab, use the same piece of apparatus for different strength solutions, then you start to change your solution strength just a little bit. And if you're doing it very, very accurately, you wouldn't want that to happen. Okay, so now, if I write on in pencil what that one is, so we don't forget, so that's one M, M standing for molar, and this is 0.5 M. Is a molar a person that catches moles? No, a molar is a specific number of atoms or molecules within the amount that you're measuring. And it's known and we calculate that using a number called Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number? No, Avogadro's number. It's not so we've some got kind of mole hunters and avocados. Mole hunters and avocados, yes indeed. So now we're going to do the same thing as we did again. We're going to take out of the 0.5 um, molar solution into a fresh, clean, dry jam jar. And we're going to take out, and we did the calculation earlier, 25 millilitres out of that and dissolve it back down again to 50 millilitres, which gives us a 0.25 molar solution. Okay, and you'll be aware from what we said in the earlier video about measurements of those grams of mass that the reason why we didn't try and weigh that out is because those minuscule bits of weighing out we would be far less accurate than we will be if we do these larger amounts on dilutions which actually works quite well so you've zeroed that jam jar for us and now you can take out 25 mils out of the 0.5 molar one okay so you've got the 25 mils from that accurately. You can stand up now, you don't have to keep on uh, crawling around the floor for it. We'll leave that pet in there so we know which one it was that we used. And obviously pop that yeah. in there. You've got a slight purple tinge to it. Now you're, um, you're pouring out clean, fresh, we'll call it distilled water as is, um, as is softened using reverse osmosis. Right, so, what we're going to do is we're going to measure out 25 mils of the water. We don't need to wash the measuring cylinder out for this because it's, it's the same concentration of solution that's gone into here as we want to put in there, okay? And it's had nothing else in. So, And also that washes the measuring cylinder out and gets the last bits in. So we will cut from now until when he pours it in. Right, so put that down into our row where we've got them. And now you're gonna pipette in. Now, if I remember last time when we were doing this, we'd got, um, in our jam jars, we'd got about 100 milliliters of liquid. This time we have got 25 milliliters, 50-50. Okay, so we should be able to get away with about five milliliters of the red cabbage indicator. Um, so before we do that, would you like to actually get a proper um, idea of the actual yes. pH? 
because um, what we'll do is we'll get the actual indicator paper and mm -hmm. I'll just make three small pieces of it because you remember we're very very short of it. Okay so we're going to have to use a pair of tweezers to get those into there and yeah. uh, what we'll do is we'll tip the jam jars over slightly so that you've got the liquid yeah. closer. Yeah. There you go. Yeah if you're doing that you make sure your hands are dry because it will affect the... Right. Have you dropped it? Yes. Okay. If you do it weakest to strongest, then it means that the strongest doesn't affect. Yes, that's a good idea. But you can always um, rinse your tweezers off in this water first. I'm looking at this, I'm saying, yeah, we're looking pH 3. They, they look darker though. They, they just look ever so slight. That one mould actually is a more ready colour, so... So that's looking closer to the pH 2, that one is, anyway. That half a mould... But that one is... That one is clearly going darker than the pH 2. A darker red than the pH 2. So we are getting a slightly stronger acid, but it's not very noticeable in that. And um, it's, it's what you call a wide range pH um, indicator solution because it's a wide range one. You do, it's difficult to test it over that narrow so, range that you've so got there. So because it's only very small differences, because that pH scale is going all the way from... 1 through to 14 on yeah. that indicator paper. Yeah, it's difficult to actually get a proper measurement. You, what you do is you get a rough idea of whereabouts on the pH scale you are, and then yes. you can do a narrow range pH so, um, indicator. Are we going to use this as Yeah, well? we're going to use that as well, so have a go. We'll put, a, put a fair amount of it in, and give it a good swish around and show it to the camera so they can see. So we want a nice dark colour. Okay, so we, we are getting a slightly different colour. Is there, if I just give it a swish around and pop it up, you can see that. Okay. So they are ever so slightly different. But this one you can quite clearly see is much darker. Like these two are very similar. So, so these two are very similar, but this one is... A darker red. Okay. Like you can, can definitely. Tell. Yeah. So, what are you concluding from this then? Because that's the one molar that you were indicating is the very much darker red, and the lighter one is the quarter of a molar. Okay. So remember, the biggest difference between concentration it's is the between the one molar and the point five molar. The point five molar to the quarter of a molar. Um, solution that's quite a t uh, much tighter difference. What are your conclusions based on your observations here that this is, this appears to be producing a more acidic solution at a lower pH? What's your conclusion? That definitely watering the acid down does affect its pH. Yes, it affects its pH. Which is effect, which means it's affecting the concentration of H plus ions within the solution, doesn't it? So yes. we've we've obviously we have reduced the concentration of H plus ions within the solution, so the pH is going down. What you notice though is that that effect is actually quite small. Actually quite small. So what we can do is if we if we take the jug of water now, and I basically take um, grab the plate. Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll hold this and you add water and let's see if we can make it go any weaker than that, if we can lower the pH by just adding water. Are we actually just watering down our indicator solution or are we changing the pH? Do you want to grab a bit of the indicator solution and top it off with the indicator solution and see if we're actually altering the pH or are we just watering it down, watering down the indicator solution. So remember the indicator solution is purple at neutral for those of you who don't recall. Let's go all out here. Are we getting any nearer to purple? We've still got three H plus ions in there, haven't yeah. we? That's what we're getting. Maybe we shouldn't fill it up too much. And we're, it's... It is I, more I, purple, I, I am seeing a slight tinge of purple in there. Now the way to get around this, if grab me an empty jar and oh, do you want me to? Do, oh yes, okay, clever idea. Let's do that. How much water do you want to add to this? Let's see. Do you want to? Do you want to just add some more water to it? Yeah, more. Okay, well, um, more. I'll just pour that bit away that's spilt on there. Do you want to? Um, 
there's a there's a great big empty jam jar here. We can use that to go and fetch water. More, so, more water. So we add more water to it. Is it going any more purple? Actually, that's interesting because I think that's closer to purple now. I think you're right. So we are reducing its pH, but this wow, is, that is actually it's noticeable now. So if you just top that off, and that's actually quite a big difference in the colour. So the reason why this is interesting for you is because if you do this to wash away acid, if you need to wash away acid, you have literally got to flood acid with yeah, water. Yeah, that, that does show precisely how much you need. And it's only... Oh, and I'm spilling it on the floor. A little oh. bit of a colour change. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, getting it, we're not getting it down to neutral. It's not a particularly strong acid, so it's not very dangerous at all, that acid if you spill that on you, I mean, and, and here it's actually getting quite close to neutral now. But your problem comes is if you spill acid because you're changing a car battery or you're doing some cleaning and you spill acid on yourself, you really need to flood the area with lots and lots of water. I mean, we're talking shower, hose pipe, bath loads of water. It's get as much cold water on there as quickly as possible.